guys, this is Jesse with McDominator Gaming. It's going to go over some gameplay again today and go ahead and go over some strategy and um, you know how to use this weird deck that I use being free to play. It was really the first deck that I came across that I was effective with. I run, in case you haven't watched any of these videos, I run my Knight, Balloon, Princess, Arrows, Freeze, barbarians wizard and spear goblins and i'm about six well 550 gold away from being able to upgrade my spear goblins to 12 so all my commons would get to 12 which is you know, i'd be happy with that so we'll go over a couple games the last one that i want to go over was a really fun game um enjoy that. well i guess i'll go ahead and show this one with this hog deck just because well the guy threw a laugh out there on the second push of the game, so I figured I ought to throw him up on the internet here as well. And it's a tough deck for me to play against. He has Executioner and Tornado. If played correctly, I'm going to struggle against this. So I go ahead and get my barbs out, and between them and the wizard, you know, take care of that. The problem that I have right now is I know that I'm far behind on Elixir, because I had to put... 10 elixir into that left lane. I had five initially with the wizard, and then when I had to drop my barbs, so I said, put me up to 10 in that left lane. He dropped his executioner defensively, thankfully, but I'm still behind on elixir. So I want to get some kind of value for those barbs, so I go ahead and use my freeze. He drops his knight. Going to be able to melt through that, melt through the skeletons. Here comes his log. We're not going to get much damage. Anytime I see a log come out, I'll go ahead and drop princess. Just because I know the logs can be the main anti-princess they have. Now at this point, I need to come up with a way to make up some elixir and get a better trade out of this. Because if I drop my knight, it's going to put him back up on elixir. And I want to be able to catch up. So what I do, and I will with any um, musketeer that's coming down the lane alone. I'll drop my goblins around her. So she'll be distracted and have to shoot three times and then turn to the tower. But right now for me as a tower 11... If the Musketeers are level 9 or uh, below, I can do it without giving up any damage to my tower. So, haven't seen the hog yet. Didn't know it was a hog deck. Oh no, I take that back. He, he dropped it right off the bat. That's poor play by me. Um, so here, I need to drop my barbs one over to the left. One block to the left. I messed that up. It's okay. He throws out the fireball. Good preemptive spell. And then he taunts. You know, that's why he's on this video. You know, beating hog decks is always good to watch and learn how to do it in different ways because they are by far the most overused card at the high-end game. So at this point, I'm just going to let my wizard go uh, off on his own, just see if he can get some damage and let him die. I'm not worried about it. And so I drop my knight just to the right of center because his knight is on the right side of the bridge. He will pull over. And mine will come back. And I'll get an extra tower shot or two on him. So that'll help my knight have a little extra health on this. So I prep up my balloon to go with him. I should have waited another second. It actually works out pretty well for me though. And I wait until the last second to freeze that musketeer. And he tries to use his tornado and misses. So of course uh, I usually don't taunt people. But the taunt goes back out. Uh, I have him down to 240. I know that my arrows do 130 damage each time, so I'm just looking to use two arrows, and that's going to be the game for me. So I go ahead and combo kill the Executioner so I can get a push going. I want to use my arrows anyway, so I use those to help out the Knight. He'll get a hit in on the Musketeer, not much. So here you can see I'm wanting to use my Goblins again. They're highlighted, but he goes ahead and supplements the... Uh, musketeer with another unit so I want to drop in my goblins further back and he put all of that stuff right together so I'm gonna get great value for this I go ahead and freeze them and get my barbs down you know I'm gonna get great value since all those were right together he launches his fireball deep I have my barbs up high because I learned from last time not to drop them deep and I protected two of my barbs let me get my arrows out and at this point it's just mop-up duty there's really nothing he can do here that's going to work out for him. Because I have my freeze ready to go. He drops his executioner and musketeer together. I just go ahead and freeze those, melt both, drop my barbs, and that's the game there. Um, you know, like I said, I usually don't taunt, but 
after that second push, him celebrating that preemptive, I uh, figured it was fitting to go ahead and give that back to him. And he actually has a high trophy count of over 5,000. He's ahead of where I am right now, too. He's number 6,978 currently. And I am 8,752. So I'm doing well right now. I'm in the top 10,000, which would be a personal best. Uh, last season... I'm guessing, because they didn't tell you what you finished, I'm guessing I finished about 15,000. So if I finish in the top 10,000, I'm going to be ecstatic. Because quite honestly, I don't feel like my cards are leveled enough to be up there. You know, I'm about to have all 12 for my common, 6s for my epics, I have a level 9 for my only rare in the wizard, and a level 2 legendary. So... I don't really feel like my card levels are quite high enough, but it's working out. My wizard can't one-shot max minions yet either. So that's a tough one uh, for me. Lava Moon. We'll watch a Lava Moon uh, defense here. Because uh, you know how it goes. Lava Moon is... You don't run into that from time to time. It's hard to deal with. This is your classic deck that you'll run into with it. They'll have a couple air support, a couple quick cycle cards, lightning... Probably, they usually have the um, skeleton spawner. I'm blanking on the name Tombstone. They usually have one of those as well. So I don't know it's Lava Loon yet. I use my wizard. I really wish I hadn't, um, if I had known any different. But I'm going to go ahead and combo my knight with my wizard. And I get a push going. His tombstone's in a bad place. So I'm in great shape right now. I'm going to go ahead and freeze his balloon so I can get some hits on it. Good play by him to get the minions up. They're going to mop up all of the other stuff. Kill everything else. So I'm going to have to use my spear goblins at this point. To whittle down that balloon. Arrows to take out the minions. And my goblins are able to distract the mega minion. So we are in excellent shape right now. Great first push. We're behind on elixir. But we're okay. So I don't want this tombstone distracting my troops. I go ahead and drop my knight up front on it. And just kill it just be done with it so that it has no value at all and that's an even trade for me so i have the i haven't now i know it's the lava loon because i had seen the balloon and so i go ahead and drop my princess on the left over here and i force him to have to play something over there it's only a one elixir card but it's something i don't have to deal with on the right so he drops these together great for me as soon as my wizard's hitting both and I have the elixir, I freeze both the Lava Hound and the Balloon. And this is easy work for my wizard right now. You know, just cut right through them, kill them, and I'm going to, when it pops, just leave it alone. Let my wizard take care of them. I suspect that he has the lightning just based on the deck right now, but he hasn't shown that to me yet. So right now I just want to get a little bit of chip damage. I want to cycle through my cards because I need my wizard back. So I'm going to try to distract this mega minion with my knight. And have my princess help take it out. I want to drop my barbs up high because my barbs have had no use this game. If, they, if he had had a miner, a miner is another card that is commonly used with Lava Hound. Uh, I usually use my barbs to help protect my wizard that, with those. So use my arrows there. Here comes his lightning. It's going to cause me a little bit of problems. That's the first time he's touched my tower, by the way. So I need to get my princess out. Splash damage that balloon. Kill it. And drop my knight to distract all the lava pups. So I take minimal damage to my tower. Get my spear goblins up on the tombstone. I do not want to get any value. And it doesn't. So I have my wizard ready again. Gonna go ahead and get him down. And this time, what I did is I dropped my wizard with my barbs. And the reason I did that was to try to help protect him from the lightning. If a lightning were to be dropped on him, it would hit the barbs instead of him. Uh, no lightning came right away. As soon as they're both on top of each other, I go ahead and freeze them. And then my wizard do some work, and game's over by that point. So the only time I struggle with uh, Lava Loon is when they send them separate. If they sent one, say they sent the balloon more towards the middle and the lava hound on the outside, and I cannot get that combo hit with my wizard, then I have a little bit of trouble. Um, 
I guess we'll wrap up watching this. I'm ecstatic about this win. This guy, I don't know his name, from Black Fox Clan here. He has... Uh, well, he's changed his deck since I played. I mean, he went back to a Royal Giant deck, which, go figure, Royal Giant deck, uh, you know, as easy as that is to use, probably what got him over 5,000. But when he played me, he had a fully maxed out deck. The Dark Prince, Mirror, Pe the Big Pekka, then Poison, Furnace, Fire Spirits, the Knight, uh, not Knight Prince, I mean, Dark Prince and Prince, I don't know if I said Knight before. And which all fully maxed out. Now I have never beaten a fully maxed deck. And I knew this game would get me into the top 10,000 again if I won it. Coming into the game. Because the guy I just tied was in the top 10,000. And I see this level 13 and I figure, well, I'm basically looking to play for a tie at this point. I'm already thinking I am not using my balloon until the one minute mark if I have to. I'm just going to cycle everything else. So, I'm thinking he's probably running a double prince deck right now. Because, you, mainly when I see the prince, I do see the dark prince with him. So, here he is, sure enough. And so, I, I do not want to play my barbs here. Because, with the dark prince being splash damage and area damage. But, I have no choice with what I have. So I'm going to have to let my barbs die. And so I just take him out and take those two furnace fire spirits and basically wait out this poison at this point. So I have my princess ready to take out these fire spirits. So get rid of those. And wait to see what he's going to throw down here. I have a long time to wait. I'm behind on elixir, so I have a lot of time I can wait. And a little chip shot. Here comes the witch. I want to get to my knight. The play against the witch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop my spear goblins in the middle, and then I'm going to drop my knight up closer to the witch to tank her hits. Is what I should do. Let's see if I do. Yep. There we go. So he also tanks the fire spirits. I'm late dropping my wizard. I was going to try to have him take out the fire spirits in the left lane. I was late, but that's okay. I'm doing pretty well at this point. I'm pretty happy with where I am. I'm holding strong. Now this is what I want to use my barbs, is against him. So I pull to the middle, because I'm expecting that poison. So any kind of mass troop is great against the normal prince. You know, your goblins, your skeleton army, anything that takes multiple hits. Not so much. You want a high hit point, single troop against the dark prince. So I'm going to drop my princess in the middle to pull him over. And she was a great choice, too, because she gets the splash damage to kill those fire spirits. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to drop my spear goblins behind her to keep pulling him over. I did not want to use them, but it kept him moving away from my tower and protected that. So I see, you know, the Dark Prince coming down the left. So I go ahead and drop my knight in the middle. It pulls the back fire spirit over, and it's going to allow me to do my high damage to the Dark Prince. You know, like I said, you don't want a group of anything there. You just want one high hit point target. So first time getting my balloon out here. And I dropped my freeze a little too soon. I should have waited to see that witch. But I get one hit. So that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my wizard down to get rid of these skeletons and to help here. And what I do to protect my wizard is I drop the goblins up high. And that's going to make the prince take three different hits to kill them. And so while he's doing that, my wizard's getting damage on him. And I can get my knight out because I've accumulated enough elixir to pull him back over again. Let my wizard keep doing work. And so that went really well for me. I'm going to go ahead and launch another balloon. My wizard is able to take out one of those fire spirits. Uh, here, I know I'm not going to get any damage with my balloon because he has another furnace out. I'm not even going to bother. I drop my princess to distract the prince, pull him over, and poison went up high. That's a bad play by him. Go ahead and drop my barbs back out of the poison, finish off that prince, and I try to combo here using my goblins. Uh, I just wanted to get rid of that furnace, and I was able to, so that worked out well. I need to distract these knights here. 
and not a very good play by him. He sees my wizard out, and I guess he's thinking that the first prince is going to kill the wizard. But what I'm able to do because he does that is drop my prince, my knight up high, and then freeze both of these, get splash damage on both, get rid of both of them. And now heading into overtime, I'm in very strong shape right now. Because I can, my wizard is still doing really good work there. And I drop my goblins in the middle to try to distract the witch. Uh, he gets a furnace down, so I'm not going to get any value with that balloon, which is okay. So I get my wizard down again. He's going to be able to take out these fire spirits and the uh, skeletons and to be able to take down the witch as well. And I want to drop my troops. I'm trying to protect my knight, but in that poison, there's really nothing I can do. So I go ahead and drop my knight just up outside of the poison. Use my princess to get rid of those fire spirits. Save some hit points on my uh, knight. And he has a lot of stuff right there all packed together. Good value for my freeze right now. So freeze is going to take care of that. The furnace is down. He gets another furnace down though, which is tough. That was a bad play by him. The witch was one hit and she died and he dropped fire spirits to try to take out the princess. But the witch had just died, so the princess killed the fire spirits. They got absolutely no value. So my balloon kills the furnace. We have just we have nine seconds left in this game. He has 2,072 hit points on his tower. All he has to do right now is mirror those fire spirits and game's over. There's no way that P.E.K.K.A. is getting to my tower and getting three hits in to kill it. But what he does instead... And he thought about it. He clicked on fire spirits and they went off to the night. And so what's going to happen here is my balloon gets two hits. It dies. And with under a second left, the death damage after those two hits is enough to take down that tower. So less than one second left in overtime. We get the win over a maxed out deck. First time I've ever beat a maxed deck. Um, so I was excited about that, and it also put me into, like I said, the top 10,000. I forget what I was earlier in the video, but I'm 8,778 now. And we had a personal best for the season at 4,758. My highest that I ended last season at was 4,801. So we're actually creeping up on that number. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to hit uh, Master this season because... Now the season's being a month long. We still have an additional two weeks left on the season. The top tier players that I would normally play in the 4,800 range are now going to bump up higher as the season goes on. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get up there and master. Uh, that's my goal for the season. All right, get you some elites. So, you know, it was a, a fun game. You know, it's great to win that one. Uh, the Hog Freeze deck, I usually tie those best case. Yeah, he's at 8738. But yeah, so, you know, this deck works really well for me. It's a little bit tricky. There's a lot of little nuances to it. Uh, you have to play it a lot to get used to how you play against each different troop that comes out. Because not having a building really impacts you negatively in a lot of ways, especially against Golem decks, Three Musketeer decks, and Lava Hound decks. But again, if you want to give it a try, it works great for me. It's the Knight, Barbarians, Spear Goblins, and Arrows are the commons I use. I use the Wizard as the only rare, and then I use Balloon and Freeze as my Epics, and a Princess as my uh, Legendary. Deck works great for me. You know, it's worth giving it a shot. And hopefully we don't want to get the balloon nerfed because we, too many people start using it. We can't have that. Uh, if that gets nerfed, I'm in trouble because you know, all my other card levels are pretty low. I have a couple things at tournament standard, but otherwise, with being free to play, I just don't have enough gold to upgrade things that I don't use. You can see that I have a lot of level 7 at the highest for a few things I've used in tournament standard, but... And that's it. So, let's see. Yeah. See, something like that would be nice, but not going to do it. Free to play is free to play. Uh, yeah, I'll be cool. 
So anyway, hey, appreciate you guys checking this out. Hoping that you're finding some of these tips useful in your game. You know, and hopefully we keep pushing higher here. And maybe we can end the season in the top 10,000. That would be really cool to be able to do. So as I sign off here, let's go look at where 4758 is compared to the local leaderboard. See how far off we are right now. All right, a little more, about 250 trophies. All right, yeah, we're not going to catch up to that. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And, you know, leave a like if you like this. Leave a comment below. Always love communicating.